Tennessee's Eric Berry at the podium now. Uh, contribution to my team is at safety, so right now I just want to focus on that. If they do want to do that, then we'll talk about it, but right now that's where I'm helping them at. Coach Kiffin said the biggest drawback to that would be you, you're in the process of learning this new defense. You're, you're an All-American safety. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, how much do you have to learn? That, if that's the biggest drawback, how much of the defense do you know right now? Um, I know a lot of the defense right now. It's just, just kind of tough to get the, get the terminology, the different names of the defenses, uh, getting those things down. Uh, you know, Coach Chavis and Monty's defense are very similar. Uh, but it's just the termolo terminology and the different checks you make in different situations. So that's the tough part about it. Over here to your right, near the wall. Hey, Eric, over here. Could you kind of talk about what the LSU guys can look forward to with John Chavis, how, how he'll motivate and drive them? Uh, they just need to look forward to a, a great coach. Um, they, they couldn't have a, a better defensive coordinator uh, down there. Uh, you know, they. Coach Chavis is a very intense guy. He, he knows what he wants in a defense and what he wants out of his players, and that's what he's going to expect from them. Uh, but they, they should have a lot of fun with playing for Coach Chavis, though. Right here in the front. Eric, I actually got two questions. Uh, can you talk about the differences uh, in the defensive scheme from Chavis to uh, uh, Monty? And also, uh, you were the leading vote-getter in the uh, – media's preseason all SEC team does that do you does that put any more pressure on you for this year to perform even more uh, like step your game up another level uh, to the Monty and Chavis question uh, uh, they're both very similar as coaches uh, as far as their intensity for the game their, their knowledge of the game uh, they were just on two different levels one was in the NFL and one was in college uh, but uh, they are very great coaches uh, extremely well very very knowledgeable of the game and uh, both of them are A pluses in my book. Um, and as far as the question about uh, having to step my game up, I feel like uh, that's, that's any season, even if this Heisman stuff wasn't going on. I feel like I always look back and see what I can improve from last season. Uh, I always look and see what, what I can uh, make better in my game. Uh, I always go in working like I'm coming in like a freshman, uh, trying to earn a spot. That's just how, that's my mentality. So that, that, that's, that hasn't changed. Over to your left in the middle. Uh, what do you think of the whole Heisman campaign? And uh, did they talk to you beforehand about it? Were you all for it? Uh, just give us some of your thoughts on that. Uh, just, just hearing that they wanted to uh, push the campaign for me, I mean, that made me feel very good. Uh, I, I really love the UT staff for doing that for me. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been fun. And they did. They notified me of it. And I was all for it, you know. And, uh, I do appreciate that from them, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like I like this uh, this deal. Up the aisle right here. Hey Eric, uh, just first off, uh, what is your best Monty Kiffin story, or, or how could you best describe Monty Kiffin? Uh, I know he he got tired of doing all the recruiting. You know, coming from Tampa Bay in the NFL, he he didn't really know the recruiting side of of college football, so. He was talking to me about how he was tired of flying and he didn't want to fly. He's like, he's, I just want to get on the grass and coach, E. That's all I want to do. I just want to get on the field and coach you guys. I, I don't want to do any more recruiting. And he was kind of like spilling his heart to me, and it was pretty cool. We both laughed about it. It was really funny. And, and just uh, a second part, uh, and this is a little bit off the wall, I'm asking all the players here this week, if there was a – I know Coach Kiffin is your coach, but if there was another coach in the SEC – that you could see yourself playing for, who might that coach be? I'm talking about a coach right now? Right. That's it? I, I really can't see one, to be honest with you. Uh, coach Kiffin is all I know right now. Um, Philip Foreman and Coach Kiffin. And uh, those two guys, I, I mean, Coach Kiffin has got our back no matter what, as you can see. Uh, and that's all we want out of a, a coach. And that's what we respect. That's what we play for. Oh, to your left. Eric, what do you think of Lane's colorful uh, collection of comments this offseason? Uh, I mean, we were 5-7 and seven last year. Um, you know, we just thought we were in this, in this thing by ourselves last year, you know, not having uh, anybody on our sides. I mean, we were 5-7. and seven, So when he comes in and says that he has confidence in us, basically, and saying that he has faith in us, I mean, 
the team went crazy. Like, man, this, he, he really does believe in us. And just seeing somebody having that type of faith uh, in us after a five and seven season, I mean, who, who wouldn't want to play for him? You know, who wouldn't want to uh, put themselves on the line for him? So that's, that's what we're doing right now in this offseason. That's what we're going to do during the season. Here in the front row again. Eric, speaking of the Heisman thing, um, you take inspiration from Charles Woodson? Because, I mean, you're ba ba if you win it, you'd be that type of player, I would think. Uh, yeah, that would be cool, you know, um, being put in the same category as Charles Woodson. Uh, but I'd rather be in the, in the same category as, you know, USC and Florida, you know, with the national championships, the SEC championships. You know, that's a bigger, bigger accomplishment in my eyes, and that's what we're trying to get done. Here in the second row. Yeah, Coach Kiffin made a few ripples around the league, too. I wonder if he uh, – did he kind of tell you guys that that was his plan? Because he said it was somewhat calculated to get Tennessee's name out there. Did he tell you guys, and what was your reaction to it? Uh, he, he didn't tell us directly, but he told us, like, look here, guys, I got your back no matter what, uh, no matter the situation, no matter what you went through last year. Uh, we're not, we're not going to dwell on that. We're just going to focus on what we need to get done this year. And I guess him saying those comments kind of – I guess kind of proved it to us that, man, he really does have faith in us. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that he stepped on some toes, but it did a lot for our team and, and how much respect we do have for uh, Lane Kiffin. To your left, Eric, what do you think about your little brother committing without even playing high school football yet? Uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, and he, I, can, I know my brother better than anybody else. And uh, just to hear that he wants to come to Tennessee. He loves Tennessee, and, and he already loves Coach Kiffin and that staff. And I'm very excited to see him, uh, I guess, carry on the, the orange bloodline and uh, see what he has to offer when he comes to UT. Straight ahead of me in the back. <clears throat> OK. Back here. Eric, do you have any uh, personal relationship at all with Taylor Mays? Have you seen him play? And could you compare and contrast your two styles of playing in the same position? Uh, I've seen, I've watched a lot of film on Taylor Mays, to be honest with you, uh, simply for the fact that we run the same defense as those guys. And I've been, I've been learning a lot of things from them and really been seeing what I could do as far as this system that Coach Kiffin has brought in and uh, seeing what I can learn from him. And I, I like to think of, he, he's a big, I guess you could say, freak, a monster, uh, to be 230 and still be that fast and still that athletic. Uh, he he kind of reminds me of Sean Taylor uh, to be uh, he's a, he's that type of guy. Uh, I kind of like to think of myself as Ed Reed. You know those two those two guys I think are, are pretty good safeties and uh, we're two different safeties, but we're both pretty good I believe. And he's a great safety in my eyes. All the way in the back against the wall. Eric, as good as y'all's defense was last year, and with the addition of of Monty Kiffin. And then with the struggles offensively and the injuries they've had, is there pressure on you guys knowing that you may have to carry this team the first third of the season or so? Uh, no, nah, there's no pressure at all. Uh, I mean, we're a family. The offense takes care of the defense, and the defense takes care of the offense, uh, no matter what's going on. If, if we can't, there's been times where we couldn't stop offenses, and uh, you know our offense comes in and keeps scoring points. A uh, perfect example was when Eric Ainge was here. And we went into four overtimes with Kentucky. I mean, we couldn't stop those guys for nothing, but they just kept fighting and kept scoring. And likewise on D, where we got to hold the guys and, and get, our, get our offense a chance to score.